Coming up on this edition of the NSFW Show, we go all the way across the pond to visit with Will Harris. He of ChannelFlip.com. We try to rename an Austin Sanitation Department. Find out who's more British and we pitch your ideas. The chat realm's choice to Will himself. We find out if we can get some programs on Channel Flip. It's all coming up on this edition of NSFWA. Netcasts you love From people you trust This is Twit Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com This is NSFW episode 62 for February 9th, 2011 Brito! This episode of NSFW brought to you by Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com slash NSFW and start your free two-week trial. And by MailRoute. If you want no spam in your inbox, head on over to MailRoute.info, the only way that you can ensure maximum no spam. Dance. 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 A summy scratch beat. Let's go. Dance. I like to dance. I like to dance. I wanna dance. I need to dance, baby. You wanna dance? Play forties on this mic. Uh -huh. We about to do this right. That's right. All dancing, please don't fight. Move into the morning light. The floor is your domain. Get up and don't be lame. We grooving all the same. Dancing like the movie fame. She got a sexy thing. She do. Go touch a sexy thing. Sexy friend, clap, 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 snap, clap, 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 snap. Dance. All right, that's enough for me. I say it's go time, and with a clap, clap, snap, that means it's go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the webinars. My name is Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my inimitable co host, Professor Juxtaputon, uh, Imperator. Of um, uh, Justin Robert Young. How are you doing, buddy? What's going on? <laughs> I like how that introduction crashed the music. It was <laughs> overloading the music, and you it know just what? crashed. We've been pre-showing so long that the other drive went to sleep, so it got through the beginning of the song. It's like, hey, this is long enough to get started, then we've got nothing. <laughs> How you doing, uh, Justin? How long is this intro going to go to say his <laughs> name so we can get on with the show, 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 show? I'm doing you great, like Brian. The like <laughs> there we go. We'll just rely. We'll just rely on Turquoise Jeep to pull up the slack on this episode. How about that? Flossy baby. Uh, <laughs> yes, scratch. I'm so excited. Here on the show tonight, we have Will Harris, all the way from England, uh, in London, right now, WillChannelFlip.com. Will, how are you doing this morning? It's like two in the morning there for you, right? It's it's two in the morning here, Justin, and you know what? I am ready with a clap, 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 and a clap, clap, snap. See, that's how quickly he picks <laughs> it up. He's fast on the uptake, and it's two, two, not only two in the morning, it's two intense in the morning wow. in England. Yes. That's right. It's two, it's two, two the extreme in the morning. You. It's too legit to quit. All right, Justin, uh, let's just jump right in, man. What do we got going on? Well, Brian, as you know, Will Harris runs the fantastic ChannelFlip.com, which is a great destination for all sorts of web video, including one of my favorite uh, web videos, uh, the, the Mitchell Soapbox of uh, Mitchell uh, and, and Webb the uh, fantastic series that they have uh, there. So what we're going to do is have you folks in chat realm go ahead and pitch ideas to the uh, snarky yet erudite Will Harris, and he is going to uh, sort through them, and uh, there's no guarantee that anyone's going to get anything, but uh, we're going to make fun of everybody's ideas, and it's going to be a hilarious thing, and we're going to find out if there can be the new Channel Flipper Baby. Flipper Second, Baby? Yeah, Flipper uh, Baby. What's Channel what? Flipper Baby. Is that what you named this? Uh, it's called the Channel Flipper Baby. Is that, yeah. That's a terrible name. Why would it, I don't get it? Because it'd be a new show, right? So uh, it would be like like the baby to the network. It's Channel Flip. Yeah, and you just made it a dolphin. Well, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, that's good. What are we doing first, though? <laughs> well, also, Brian, coming up, we're going to play a game of who's more British. But to begin, 
Brian, you live in Austin, Texas, right? Uh, that's true. That is true. I live right here in Austin, Texas, and in fact, this is our first time back in the studio since our South Florida adventure, and uh, uh, we found out that there's some adventures going on right here in Austin, right? Absolutely. Well, your sanitation department over there, uh, <laughs> apparently oh, they, they well, do what, more. What, what on earth is going to be good after? So your sanitation, let's talk, let's talk duty. Listen, <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, uh, Brian, this is your locality. I don't. You can't make fun of, of what's happening on your tax dollars. All okay? right. All right. Uh, so, so here's the deal. The sanitation department apparently provides more than just your regular sanitation department. They want a new name, and they've opened up the uh, the voting and nominations for new names to everybody. It's on the internet. People can vote. And uh, you know, we figured that since you are you're not some carpet carpet bag and weirdo. You know, All right. Uh, now, uh, okay, that's true that I do live in Austin, and I guess we got a few people uh, watching that might have some suggestions for names. Where can people go if they want to play along at home, if they want to name the Austin Sanitation Department? Uh, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to have to make a bit.ly link uh, for it. All which, right, we'll uh, have one up here shortly because I just got a link right here. It says here, new yeah. name for the Solid Waste Services Department. So it's not just <laughs> it's not just the trash. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> Oh, that's even better. Thank you. <laughs> New name for the Solid Waste Services Department. And the explanation says, did you not read the name? Did you not see what our old name is? There are, uh, I get three votes. Everybody gets three votes, and they can make some magic happen here. I say if we get on the board, that's all that matters to me. Right now, the number one with 28,000 <laughs> votes is the Fred Durst Society of the Humanities and Arts. <laughs> which, uh, wait, is Fred Durst, uh, was, was that the guy from the B-52s? What was his name? Is that uh, Fred Durst was no, 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 Fred Durst is Limp Bizkit. Oh, Limp Bizkit, that's right, that's right. L-I-M-P, Bizkit is right That's here. right, that's right. That, that's hilarious. Uh, Department of Neat and Clean has 2,000 <laughs> votes. The Ministry of Filth. The Ministry of Filth. <laughs> has 1,272. <laughs> that sounds like Monty Python. Hufflepuff has 516. Lemon Party has uh, 435. Austin Recycling and Waste Reduction Department, WRD, w RWRD, Reward, and the Longhorn Alumni Society. All right, <laughs> screw you guys. No, there's actually another one. There's one deep down or a little bit lower. How much like will Texas this cost the taxpayers is a great name. <laughs> Waste not, uh, keep Austin wasted. I like that yeah. one. We have, can you taste the waste? <laughs> Floater, the Department <laughs> of Filth, Litter, Outreach, Abatement, Trimmings, Education, and Recycling. Clean Austin. Uh, dude, uh, this we, thing. We have, we, have, we have two girls, one treatment plant. No way. Uh, Is that on board? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can we just vote that one up? Can we, can we just? No, we have to. All right, real quick, chat room. We're going to rapid fire, take suggestions, and we're going to find one that we will vote up for the rest of this show. So right now, we want everybody in the chat realm to go ahead and shoot out your suggestions. Uh, will, Brian, well, let's just call out the ones that we like the most, although or at least the ones that we can read. Yeah, uh, a lot of people like the lemon party one. Maximum no filth. <laughs> I got to admit, I'm partial to that one. Uh, Ministry of Filth, that one's already on there. Mini Phil. Uh, uh, we have, we have, we have uh, Trash uh, GTFO. GTFO. <laughs> we have the Crap Factory. <laughs> Austin Sanitation Services. Station services for ass. That's very good. Scat Removal. Uh, jury Duty, D-O-O-D-Y. Although, I don't know. I think it should be Brian related since he lives in the city. <laughs> um, some of these I'm, I'm having to, to cut away from. I like poop is bad. How about that one? Mayonnaise. <laughs> no more southern trash is a little no, bit harsh. Maximum no filth seems to be... It seems to be the popular the, the it's a popular <laughs> uprising. People like maximum no filth, and it's in your face, and they want no filth. Um, what do you say? Plus, it's got a chance of, of making it. Justin, you want to you want to go? With there that we one? go. All right, I give it my thumbs up. Uh, Brian, do you? I guess you give it the thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I'll tell you what. I, I'm going to reserve judgment. So it's really between you and Will. Do you like maximum no filth, or do you see something else you like? I think I'm uh, going to give maximum no filth. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs there we up. Go. There we go. There we go. Awesome. All right. So then, uh, every, you know what? In fact, let's show our approval by giving it although, a although clap, 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 clap. Clap. Somebody also, somebody also uh, pointed out duty quest. Any last 11th hours for duty quest? Uh, nope. I'd say maximum no filth. 
Clap, it gets clap, a clap, snap. clap, snap for sure on that one. That's <laughs> absolutely. Uh, okay, so we're posting it in the chat room, and I'm sure somebody's making a bit.ly link right now as we talk about it. Go ahead and chat realm. We'll go ahead and put up the bit.ly link in there. We'll give that out. You guys can show your NSFW true colors. <clears throat> and uh, oh, the short link is mini pause, like M I N I P A dot W S slash waste. So that's M I N I P A slash W S slash or I'm sorry, M M I mini pa M I N I P A. It could be easier. <laughs> dot W S slash waste, and that'll take you straight to it. Otherwise, if you just Google it, you'll find it in no time. Just write Austin's solid waste name, and we want you to put <laughs> or, on the or board. Or just just in in two years, Google maximum no filt Austin and go to the Wikipedia page <laughs> and find out how it got its name. Clap clap snap to that, my friend. <laughs> Uh, hey man, so uh, uh, we should actually we should talk about the whole the whole maximum no filth and where that came from because some people yes. may not have watched. I know Will, Will, you've seen almost all the episodes of NSFW so far, right? I'm getting there. I'm kind of on an NSFW binge at the moment, where I just kind of sit in the well. I don't sit in the gym. That would kind of defy the point. I stand in the gym, <laughs> looking kind of you know really. Will, Will, Will sits in judgment while uh, other people work ex- out. Yeah, that wasn't there. a full rep. Sorry, I'm watching SMW. Out he right walks here. over to the uh, to the elliptical machines, plants himself between three lovely ladies, and just stares and sits there surly, laughing occasionally from the audio he's listening to. So uh, last week we were talking about <laughs> mail route. He just, he just faces the big full length mirror and just raps to it like it's like a <laughs> dance video while the girls are working out. He sits, he sits there going, clap, clap, snap. <laughs> clap, clap, snap. We're not your backup dancers. We're the aerobics class, and you're in the middle of everything. He's got, he's got his iPhone out, he's po- holding it up at himself, and he's just like... Man, you, should, you should see me in that jumpsuit, man. I'm all over that. <laughs> uh, yo, last week we were talking about spam and how much you hated spam and how you wish there could be a maximum amount of no spam people could have. Listen... Spam is ridiculous, and it's a scourge upon all of us. Uh, not unlike a deep, dark uh, fog that has settled upon our once peaceful world. But last week, we talked about a savior to all of that. The beam of sunshine for which will deliver us all into a golden Just age. Just Young Red SFW. Do you <laughs> want I'm, so, I'm sorry. It automatically, it automatically did. I swear to God, Justin. I swear to God. I was not trying to screw up the bit. I was preloading it. I was getting it set and it auto-played. I'm sorry. Continue talking. So he did a read for Mail Route last week and d 2 d 2 made an awesome video about it. Here we go. And these are all cut up from what you said last week, and I think it captures the essence of Mail Route quite effectively. Justin Robert Young for NSFW. Do you want maximum no spam? Are you tired of having minimum no spam? Welcome to MailRoute.info. You're gonna get maximum no spam. Quit being a sissy. We want maximum no spam for you at MailRoute.info. You don't want it all up in your face yelling at you like some sort of deranged homeless person. No, MailRoute.info. You can edit your MX record then you are taking it to the max. You're gonna get maximum no spam. MailRoute.info. Thomas, where's my band, please? You're like, Stop emailing me, mother. MailRoute.info. Try maximum no spam exercises, like the quiet inbox. <laughs> MailRoute.info. Quit being a sissy. MailRoute.info. It sticks a stick of dynamite in spam's mouth and throws it off a bridge and watches it explode. <laughs> Trademark. Do you know my favorite part about that mashup read is that if you type in mail route in YouTube, it's the third one from the top. Yeah. <laughs> How great Amazing. is that? My what's, favorite what's thing about that read is that Thomas just looks like some kind of um, sort of shaven rent boy. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's that's Thomas's face uh, mashed onto uh, the the Equus photo, right? From the from the yeah, play the that Harry Daniel Radcliffe Potter, did. Harry yeah. Potter lad. It's yeah. very good. But uh, but we should we should actually talk about it. if it wasn't clear to your tiny brains watching that video. Mail route is the one solution to get rid of all of your spam. You hate spam? Never see it again. All you got to do is edit your MX record, which is totally easy because you're running your own email service anyway, and you will never see a spam. No false positives, and in fact, you get 10% off the lifetime of your order because you're a badass who watches NSFW. Right, Justin? Hell, hell yeah. 
What are you going to do? Roam around the woods of life like some sort of small child getting spooked by German wood goblins? No! The wood goblins are spam! And you were you. The forest is life via email. Get mail route, which is a battle axe in this scenario. You can cut the head off the goblins, and then you can drink their blood. I don't know what the blood is. I'm still working it out. MailRoute.info! <laughs> of course. This is too much for 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Uh, as we promised. Uh, yes. Oh, you know what you chop the head off the spam with? What? The broadsword. The haunted broadsword. Oh yes, the no, haunted broadsword. That's true. But then, but then, but then you don't have the battle axe, and that totally screws up. See, that's two ad reads for mail route. You screwed up now, Will, because <laughs> you've taken away the battle axe and you've given some haunted broadsword contraption to fight wood goblins. Uh, look, here's here's the point: is uh, uh, mail route's awesome. You gotta sign up, ten percent. And uh, if you don't go there, you can. Uh, we're not friends anymore. All right. I'm not gonna sit next to you at lunch. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna say that you went to third base with uh, that boy from the track team. What? I uh, look. I gotta lay. I gotta lay down the line somewhere. They gotta go to the mail. John route. McKinley. <laughs> they, yeah, that's right. If you do not, you listen to me. If you don't sign up for mail route info right now, I'm gonna tell everyone. That you went to third base with Todd McKinley, and uh, that's that's you could take that to the bank, sir. Oh my OMG, I totally heard that too. <laughs> What's funny I'm, is that I'm, just, I'm just gonna stick it out that Todd McKinley is pretty hot. Everybody in the lie. chat room is saying that that's gayest, but no, in this scenario, you're a chick. Yeah. So oh, how not... do you like that? Accusers of gayism. <laughs> now you're, you're the a one. Chick. You're the one who made that. <laughs> The misogynistic, you know, assumption that it was a dude. Uh, I meant poof, like the explosion of smoke, not the gay, anti-gay slur from Britain. Uh, yes, okay, right. And speaking of which, and with that, it's time for you, <laughs> Will. Speaking of Britain, Brian, we're going to play a little game that we like to call Who's More British? Uh, yes, we're going to play a little game called Who's More British, and you will either survive or be killed by the wood goblin axe of Justin Robert Young, uh, Mr. Will Harris. And I'm afraid it won't be pretty unless you can pass our challenge. We will ask you a series of questions. We will give you two figures, and you have to tell us, as a Brit, you ought to know who's more British. But, of course, we find that some people, Dr. Kiki, she didn't know who was more science. That was a little bit. Almost cost yeah, her the confirmation here. Kind of a vetting process here, Will. Like we did it with Dr. Kiki, and and we tried to find out how how much science she really knew. We're gonna find out how much British you really know, because you're running around talking about, oh, I'm from London. Look at me, I run a British company. How did we know that you're just not some busboy from Scranton, Pennsylvania, who likes to put on a funny little accent? We don't it's know. Really We're gonna find point, out right Justin. now. Hold on. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, you know what? I, I do want to hear your American accent. I love hearing Brits try to do American accents. Let me, let me hear yours. Brian, you really don't want to hear my American accent right now. <laughs> you are not going to be impressed with the level of Americanness that I bring to this show. Oh, new champion! That was, Play that the was, effect. Ooh. That was amazing, dude. Come on. Get out of town. That's amazing. That was really, that was really, really good. It got slightly gay at the end. Let's see, why it you just, gotta go there? <laughs> I'm just saying, it got a little gay at the end. Other than that, I mean, that, there's gay Americans, uh, I right? I wouldn't lie to you, it did get a little gay at the end. Well, okay, <laughs> now that is, that is gayist right there. <laughs> How do you goad people into this? How do you get people to paint themselves into these corners, Justin Robert Rubles? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just fulfilling apparently my purpose of being like the Loki of the internet. <laughs> I just pop from place to place and force people to do horribly you know, detrimental things and then I laugh and fly away. <laughs> and uh, steal Thor's hammer and hide it in a pie. And speaking of laughing and flying away, we've got for our first face-off to find out who's more British, we have two people who laughed and flew away. Uh, we have uh, the dual citizenship video game mogul Richard Garriott, or the full-on Brit Richard Branson, who is more British? Justin, you better get your sound effects ready. Will, who is more British, Richard Garriott or Richard Branson? Okay, okay, I'm looking at this. I'm going to talk it out. 
you know, Richard Richard Garriott is obviously uh, a legend in the geek community. Geek is basically a British invention. We invented geek with our big NHS glasses and terrible teeth. So that's, you know, score one to Garriott. However, in Garriott's, uh, on, the, on the negative column for Garriott, dual citizenship. It's hard to be British, really British, with dual citizenship because everybody who's British knows we hate Americans. We uh, we tried to we tried to control them. They overthrew us, and now and now we're not so keen on them. So let's look at you know the Branson. Branson obviously very British. Branson is the name of a pickle here, which is a very <laughs> British thing. Okay. But, but in the negative column, he does operate a transatlantic plane service. Which does make him a little bit mid-Atlantic, right? That's not probably British. Uh, so well, I'd hate to I'm stop you here. I'm about to run out of sound effect of the heartbeat. You're going to have to wrap <laughs> this up, buddy. Uh, you know what? Uh, there are no winners here, only two losers. Oh, my gosh. This is... No, listen. It's not whether either of them are British enough. It's who's more British. Yeah, because okay. one of them is more... They In fact... Can't... You know what? Whatever it is you're about to say, you're automatically going to fail. So just say, pick one, and then we can play the sounder. Branson. <laughs> you got it. You tricked him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Turns out that uh, being somebody who lives in America and an American astronaut makes you less British than somebody who is a British citizen. And who calls That's themselves right. Lord British? How about Lord Poser? You yeah, live in Austin. Sir Richard Go eat Branson. Some barbecue. Yeah. You know what? I wonder. I wouldn't surprise me if Richard Garriott uh, actually is like a. Don't don't they do that for like outsiders? You you can't be a knight, but you could be Order of the British Empire. Yeah, OBE. you know what? Richard Garriott is a fake lord, and okay. Richard Branson is a real. <laughs> Hold knight. on. So Richard let's, let's... Richard Garriott is a friend of this show, and a guy who did a trick I invented on the International Space Station. So you listen up, Brito. You just <laughs> keep that limey talk over on the other side All of right, the Brian, pond. Right, Brian. Jesus. By the first question. You just called him. You invented a British slur, Brito. <laughs> Brito, yeah, that's what that's what uh, the second American Revolution began with. As they call, we called them Britos, and they just went down from there. <laughs> They're calling me Britos. Sounds like sounds like something it, like they'd be in, like the New York Post, like you know, like Lindsay Lohan's dating a Brito. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's Actually, Richard Brito Gary. sounds more like something Lindsay Lohan would put in her nose. <laughs> Woo! Zing! Too much for 2 a.m. Snap. Let's, let's, all right, so all it's right. one for one, Bri. Let's go to the next. Who's more British? Now, again, Will, what we're going to be looking for here is not if anyone's proper British, but of the two. Yeah, who's more British? British? Just give us, just, just, just tell, tell us this, buddy. Who's more British? Little guy named Chuck Norris? Or our own Tom Merritt. <laughs> now keep in mind, <laughs> we're going to be reading his ghost hand in that picture. <laughs> we're going to be you reading into your response here, so you just think about what it this means is, to say. This is this is tough because you know uh, Chuck Norris is kind of a uh, he's a little bit of a a, a pinup. You know, he's is it fair to say a little bit of an icon? Absolutely. Um, I'm struggling to think of, of any way in which he's English apart from not quite being as good as a lot of his contemporaries, but nevertheless having some kind of cult following. Oh and that is kind nice of a British dig. thing. It's like, nice not dig. quite as good as the rest of the world, but nevertheless, people still seem to like us. All right. So? Okay. So, okay. Let's, Who's let's, more let's British? Tom Merritt. Okay. Tom Merritt. Uh does look quite British in that photo. He's got a little air of kind of um, entitlement about him in that photo. And British looks a little Brito, if you ask me. He does look pretty Brito. Um, <laughs> without the beard as well, he definitely looks less grizzly, slightly more um, like he came from a public school. All right. In, uh, in, in the kind of shires of, of England. And so I'm going to say more British. It's going to have to be Tom Merritt. Justin? <laughs> what? Are you kidding? Hold on, Justin. Explain this to me. Explain this to me. How Chuck Norris, who was in Delta Force fighting for America as an American, is less British than Tom Merritt, who may actually be British. All right. Listen. Obviously noted Anglophile, Tom Merritt. He's a very big fan of the British people, but it breaks down to one thing. 
You're gonna go up to Chuck Norris and tell me he ain't British enough? <laughs> All right. What? What? Well, but but you can't. Moving on. <laughs> Will Harris has one right and one wrong. Brian, what is the next? Who's more British? And listen, that, that's a bad beat there, Will. I probably would have made the same decision and would have, like you, been owed a roundhouse kick to the ear okay. while my jaw it's, fell it's off from the impact. All right, it's this one's love. a tough one because we're going to give specific examples here, including, uh, well, you'll see here, <clears throat> who's more British? Is it an American with a fake British accent or a Brit, a Brito, with a fake American <laughs> accent? Who's more British? And by the way, we're looking at for the audio listeners. We got Madonna on the left, who of course moved to England and pretended she was a Brito, and <laughs> Leah Dava from Galactica, the actor who plays him, whose name escapes me. Jamie Bamber, I believe. Yeah, totally betrayed me when he started talking with the Brito accent. What? It, what's okay. who's more British? Okay. An American with okay. a fake British accent, or a Brit with a fake American accent? You know what, Madonna? Madonna, she's pretty British. She moved over here. She dresses up in tweed. She married a Brit. I guess that's pretty British. Uh, on the other hand, Leah Dahmer from Battlestar Galactica basically slept with every woman on that Battlestar, making him totally pimp. And so I'm going to say that makes him way more British. Okay, wait a minute. So you're saying uh, you're saying a Brit with a fake American accent? I guess you could put Doctor House MD in there as well, Justin. Is he right? What? No way! They're born in Britain! They're, they have British citizenship! How I'm are they I'm sorry, not uh, listen, it really breaks down to your reasoning here, Will. If you're gonna go by who banged more people, no one's banged more Brits than Madonna. And by the way, <laughs> that goes across nationalities. No one's banged more Armenians. But how many, no how many Cylons has Madonna banged? Let's be honest. Uh, really? You really want to go silent for silo with Madonna? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put a number on that. I'm going over. Uh, all right. I'm saying. I'm saying that chick's made more spines glow than Jamie Bamber. <laughs> you know what? That's true. All right. But I, you know, me personally, I'm on your side, Will. I'm gonna say that British citizens who come to America are still more British than American citizens who visit. All right. Okay, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> he's rubbing it in now. Now you're All just right. rubbing it in. All right. I'm fine. sorry. No, Brian, I was preloading that sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, screw I, you I, very <laughs> much, Justin. Uh, okay, we got we got one more. Uh, and I, th I guess this is – we're going to have to keep you alive here, Will. I hope you start bringing them in. Well, no, listen, listen. If you get this and you tie it up, then we'll go to a lightning round to, to, to see if you win. But go ahead, Okay. Brian. I can still pull it back. All right. So uh, this one here, we've got two. We got uh, <laughs> who's more British? Is it Little John or Regis Philbin? Who's more British? <laughs> I don't know who either of those people are. <laughs> what? <laughs> then I'll tell you what. Please just describe from how they look <laughs> who you believe is more British. <laughs> Who would you say is more I'm gonna say, By the way, I'm for, gonna those, say, for those so, listening, Regis Philbin is holding a gigantic wad of cash from the, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire days, and Lil John is ice grilling the camera on a red carpet with a gigantic piece that says, Crunk Ain't Dead. <laughs> nice. Is, is little, so, so Lil John, I'm going to say, uh, is, uh, shares a name with a famous Robin Hood character, so that makes him pretty British. On the other hand, Regis Philbin is a uh, is a massive fan of Leo Laporte, and uh, that makes him pretty British too, because all his Brits <laughs> love that Leo Laporte action. Oh. Okay. Uh, this makes so, total sense to me. I think this is the the logic's impeccable. Keep going. Keep rocking it. Okay. So uh, Regis uh, is was was he the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes. yes. Which is a British show. Which is a British game show. Yes. Okay. Um, on the other hand, Little John um, does look like uh, he spends a lot of time in the East End of London. So <laughs> see, I that's okay. Here's here's a quick clue for you, buddy. Um, don't don't make regional reference jokes to like we're not gonna get that. We're gonna be like, okay. oh, East Ender is he? I got it. No, because that's probably where you know people with gigantic necklaces. Live. <laughs> Nice well, save, well, Justin. Well, well, Brian, that's where the crunk lives on. And oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Place. That's what's going on. Because it ain't dead. One. It that just okay. moved I'm to East go. London. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick my neck out here. I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to say it's Regis. Justin? 
Yeah! There we go. Uh, yes, you pulled back even, of course, because Regis is white. <laughs> Moving on. What? What? Wait a minute. Brian, listen, we have what? one. We only have time for one lightning round. Here we go. Uh, Brian, please cue up a Who's More British panel. And here's the deal. Will, you cannot talk it out. You only get to say who's more British as soon as we explain to the audience who is up there on the screen. So All right, here we think go. Think as long as you want, who's... but you can only say the one word, which is your answer. Who is more British, Will? Is it Tom Baker as Doctor Who or whoever the new guy is as Doctor Who, <laughs> whose name I can't remember? Tom Baker. Oh! Matt Smith is his name. Sorry, Matt. Doesn't matter. You're not as British as Tom Baker. You never were. Oh, no, no way. You know, oh, I, hope, I know. I hope in hell. The whole world knows it. Uh, hey, Justin, man. Uh, look, we, we got our big pitch meeting, man. Because, look, here's the thing. You don't get the head of a network. Somebody no. you could throw ideas at without abusing that business. And so that's exactly what we plan to do. But first, I was thinking we would make a website. Like, uh, let's. Uh, I got this idea for a crazy website where we pitch ideas and everything. But the problem is, I'm lousy at HTML, and uh, I don't know how to make good designs. And uh, I, I like to try stuff out before I buy it. What should I do? Well, Brian, I believe you should go to screwsbiz.com. No, yes, Brian, screwsbiz.com. That's. Are you sure you don't mean to, to say the actual sponsor of this episode, S Squarespace? Are you sure you don't mean to say Squarespace? No, Brian. See, that's the problem. You could say it like that, but it's been so ubiquitous for so long. So many people have used Squarespace. I like to make up my own little nicknames because it's my friend. You know, like I don't call you Brian Brushwood. I call you Schwood or that guy that's on that show I do. You know, so for Squarespace, I like to just make a little nickname for it. My nickname for it is Squarespace. That's terrible because if you type in Squarespace, you're not going to get to Squarespace. You're not going to get to sign up for your free two-week trial. You're not going to get to see the awesome designs. You're not going to be able to create your own website, and you're not going to go to squarespace.com slash NSFW so they know who drove the traffic there. See, that's why you should not say Skirspur or whatever the hell you're Boring. saying. Boring. See, everyone knows that they can do that, and they can get the two-week trial. They can get the two-week trial, <laughs> which is why I call it the two-week trial. I don't even call it the two-week trial. I say it's the two-week trial. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 just, listen, it's a familiarity that I have with the service that apparently you don't. Of course, everybody else can go to squarespace.com <laughs> no, no. uh, slash NSFW <laughs> All right, and look, uh, get your two tweet trial. Can, can I explain just real quick here that here's the thing. When you go to squarespace.com slash NSFW, sign up for your free two-week trial, you will get to test out the awesome utilities. You'll be able to use the iPhone app to check your traffic to approve comments. You'll be able to write blog posts while you're at the bar drinking or while you're watching NSFW. Hell, I mean, maybe I'm, I have half a mind to update my site right now, right while I'm doing the show, because I'm so bored with you trying to ruin our relationship with our number one sponsor by refusing to pronounce their name correctly. So do me a favor and head on over to squarespace.com slash NSFW so you can create badass, award-winning looking websites with, off with awesome templates right now and stick a fist right up Justin's backside. Don't forget you to tweet twile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we... <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, dude. Squarespace <laughs> is amazing, and they've been they've been really good to us. They dig that you guys respond to um, our shenanigans. And In we would fact, like I to... want everybody to go at Reply Squarespace. With I'm gonna go sign up for my two tweet twice <laughs> right now. Thanks to NSFW. Go ahead on your you know Twitters. what? And in fact. We're going to say it's the two tweet twile because what happens is is it doesn't cost you anything. You just got to send them two tweets. If you've yeah, ever it's, used it's Squarespace, yeah. you got to do the two tweet twile, and that's where the you send them two twile. tweets saying thanks for sponsoring NSFW. That's all we're really asking for, right? In fact, two, you know what? Somebody, somebody's already created the two tweet twile at squarespace.com. <laughs> I'm sure they have. <laughs> that's how fast and easy it is. You go to two tweet twile .com, <laughs> 
and we're up and running. That's how easy it is with Squarespace. <laughs> All right, we only have like like 15 more minutes here to 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 take advantage of a media mogul. We're about to go international with this business. We're about to go global. We got ideas that are going to rock some socks and explode some brains, right, Justin? Absolutely. All right, real quick. So so normally, Will, uh, how do you uh, how do you go ahead and select programs for Channel Flip, which everybody should go and visit, by the way. Okay, so I guess it's a really long, really complicated creative process. What we do is we get some of the best writers, producers, directors in Britain. We put them in a room. We spitball ideas for kind of, you know, hours on end. We don't leave the room until somebody's come up with a great idea. Then we pitch test them. We put them to an audience panel. We see what they think. Then we put them through a second round of pitch testing. We use some pilots. We use some pilot scripts. Maybe we'll shoot a pilot. Then we take that to an audience feedback panel. And only then... After all that rejigging and precision engineering of our ideas, do we get the fantastic shows that end up on ChannelFlip.com? Not anymore, buddy. New format, starting <laughs> right now. New format, me, Justin, our listeners, we just bring you gold, baby. We bring you gold, yeah. you put it online, and you make them dollars. How you like that for a new plan, bro? I think you just blew my mind. That's right, I did. Exactly. And it, and it didn't and it just, you can just hear the beep. Beep, beep of the gold truck that's, that's pulling up to your door. And when I say gold truck, I don't mean a truck holding gold. I mean a truck made of solid gold, including that the tire. Halfway as it collapses under its own weight, <laughs> and an engineer scratching his head saying, why did we build a truck out of gold again? This is a terrible material for an automobile. <laughs> I'm just not, then finally, Justin and I, we just grab the gold, we throw it in your face, and just splash some money all over your face. You're like, ah, I'm splashing money on my face. Here's how we do it, Will. I'm going to read you the pitches, and I want you to be, uh, you know, give us uh, as, as uh, honest a critique as possible as we move along. We'll try to get through as many of these as possible before the end of the show. Uh, this one comes from John Gale. He pitches to you middle management Red Skull. Red Skull from the Marvel Comics works for the third branch of the right, third on, Reich. Real quick, he's British. He's British. You know, you know who Red Skull is from Marvel Comics. Because after all, he was an enemy of Captain America. See, ah, yes. you can't, you can't, you gotta, you gotta slow it down for the Brittos. <laughs> we Brittos, we we don't have this 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 kind of in, this kind of mind blowing this kind of mind blowing culture, right? <laughs> we just don't have it. So you need to slow it down. You need to slow it okay. right down. Okay, all right. So let's explain. There, there's there's a comic way popular than than Captain Brito. <laughs> Was. Uh, it's called Sergeant Brito. <laughs> it was bigger than Captain Brito, Brigadier Brito, and Sergeant Brito, <laughs> all put together, and, and Royal Air Corpsman Brito, all of them together, uh, bigger than called called Captain America, and his big enemy was the Red Skull, right? He okay. looked, um, well, here, uh, you, you yeah. explain you a know, little bit You know, Captain about America, him. he's kind of like James Bond without the vagina. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, meaning, meaning he never has sex? Is that what you're saying? No, no, like James Bond has a vagina. Oh, I got gotcha. you. It's like less manly than Captain America. Uh, well, here is um. Oh, I'm trying to find. There we go. That's the Red okay. Skull so right there, Captain buddy. America. We got the Red we're, Skull. We'll find oh, uh, yeah. some other red. Well, those are human torches. This is clearly the wrong page that I'm clicked on here. Why did you go here? <laughs> I don't know. Go back to the. Go call my Brito again. It's working great. Hey there, Brito. Here we go. Red Skull from Marvel Comics works for the third branch of Rank Incorporated, but he just can't seem to climb the ladder to success. There we go. Middle management Red Skull, a arch genius of the Nazi regime in his early days, struggling through those elements of business that are tedious, but, uh, you know, definitely very uh, relatable to an audience. What do you think? You're talking to a guy who's he's a Nazi with a dagger and a skull mask that's red, and apparently all he does is reveal himself to be the Red Skull and try to kill people in middle man management. Winner, middle winner, chicken dinner. Okay, you know what? I'm loving it. Do you know why? It takes why? two of the best movies of all time, fuses them together into one gigantic kind of spunkadelic orgasmatron. It's like office space. You've got the middle management. You've got mm -hmm. this slightly crazy psycho that's going to go like crazy on everybody. And then you've got comic books. And as we all know, comic books are you know, big. the new, hot, new, hot new source. So I like Office Space, cult classic, comic books, hot new source. You put them together, you just get source all over your money pile. It's brilliant. <laughs> money pile brilliant. You heard it right here, people. There uh, we go. That's one in the bank. That's one That's in the go. bank. That's a go. John Gale, to report bank. to your office. You just got <laughs> here we go. 
Uh, this one is called, and Brian, uh, do me a favor and try and go into the uh, inbox and uh, just uh, Google or uh, search for Magic and the Gang and with an ampersand while I read this oh, yeah. pitch. This one comes from Rick Foster. The show follows Brian Magic Brushwood and his friends Justin Robert Young and Owen J.J. Stone in the early 90s before they made their current choices in their careers. Brian aspires to be a computer programmer, while Justin, currently in the process of exploding on the scene as a comedian, and Owen as a dramatic actor. Things change when they cross paths with Michael Jordan and Will Smith. That fateful night, they become friends with his airness and the Fresh Prince. Justin wants to be a journalist. Owen wants to start his own comedy series with J.J. Walker. Seeing his friends choose different paths, Magic decides to try and be a magician despite not knowing anything about magic. It's up to Justin, Owen, Michael, and Will to help him become the greatest magician ever. The show's called Magic and the Gang. There's the picture up there on your screen, and you can download on the video version of this podcast. Will, what do you say? You know what? I have to say, uh, the, ch the chat realm is coming up trumps. So I really like this. I really like the idea of, you know, OMG Chad as part of the gang, and maybe he's the kind of Kramer character, if you're catching my <laughs> reference. He's he's the kind of slightly off the ball, off the wall, screwball kind of action. I like off the ball, too. Like, he's jumping o off, off balls all the time. All the time. Like, everywhere. Although, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I mean, like I don't Brian, know if, 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 like, if, if, if like the, the, the latter Kramer hair. behavior is really appropriate with this cast in particular. <laughs> okay, all right. Go on. I'm sorry, you're saying <laughs> Brian has awesome hair I in the Brian in the past as well. It's called Will Smith. I like the idea that it kind of mixes the, uh, you know, the kind of teen angst uh, maybe of, of glee with sure. a little fresh prints. <laughs> Because I think I think if you're going to have you know performers like Brian and Robert and OMG, you want to see them perform on the on the TV. You want to see them do their thing and, and live through their angst. Seinfeld I think style. probably through the medium of magic and song. Yeah. All right. And so that's a that's a winner. That's what I say. More I think, money in the I bank. I think that's going to get green lit. Back up that gold truck. Celebration. Rick Foster, please report to the Channel Flip headquarters. You just got hired. I uh, I like to think that that's the song that plays as the gold truck backs up, like it's an ice cream truck that just throws gold everywhere, <laughs> and it congratulates everyone as it goes. Oh my gosh, I want some gold, please. Oh, <laughs> money. All right, here we go. As uh, we are running out of time here, I'm going to read these as fast as possible. You just go ahead and uh, give me give me a, uh, a a chip chip. We're hiring you, or a uh, jolly no. Get out of my office. <laughs> is that your impression? Hold on, he did his impression of Americans. Let me hear your your impression of Brits. How about that? Hi, Oda. I'm Captain Brito. Look at me. I'm going to drink a pint down there at the pub, and then I'm going to throw up all over my missus. <laughs> what, do, what do you say? Is that That's pretty good. That sounded totally British to me. I mean, I'm not super familiar with the lingo, but that, that was spot on as far as I could tell. <laughs> Justin sounds more British than me. <laughs> There we go. Honorary that was British. the final one. I am more British than Will Harris. That's, in fact, that was secretly our last pitch. It's called Justin Robert Young is more British than, than Will. Uh, all right. You, do you have one more? All right, here Justin? we go. Yeah, yeah. We have, uh, I'm going to go through these as fast as possible. Uh, Will, you just say yes or no, okay? All right. Yeah, here we go. No, wait a <laughs> A, a, a game show called have Smell My Finger, where contestants smell my finger and guess who, what, or who I just did by Scott Reynolds. Yes or no? That's going in the bin. Nope. No good. Get okay, out of here. Okay, so it's a courtroom drama, and the show follows a few members of the British Parliament who are also competitive golfers. The American team is their biggest competition, but since the tournament takes place in England, the Parliament members are always changing the laws to get an advantage over the Yanks. We call it T-Tax. Leon gets the credit for the pitch. Ben, I, uh, <laughs> hey Justin, I don't, I don't mean to step on your pitch style, but maybe if you read slow enough, we could understand what the hell you were saying. They got a better chance of actually of actually going somewhere. I mean, it's it's that you're the one you're the one pitching. That's that's good. I mean, you you go roll with it. Okay, we open on a picturesque setting. Wait, scratch that. We open on Trafalgar Square. There are tourists gathering outside for photos and patrons coming and going from the National Gallery. Suddenly, a loud crash is heard. Screaming comes from everywhere. 
I know what you're thinking, right? It's America versus England, Demolition Derby in downtown London. We call it Simon Cowell's Crash Factor. Zach Holder gets the credit for the pitch. I like that. That's greenlit. All right. There we go. Congratulations. Back up the truck. And celebrations. <laughs> All right, keep going. All right, here's the final one, also from Zach Holder. Who wants to be a Frenchman? Just like the American who wants to be a millionaire. However, when you lose, you get deported to France forever. <laughs> that, my friends, I am taking that to the bank. That is greenlit. And we've got a winner. And I got the truck. Give us the money, you Britos. Ah, uh, look, that's it. Beep, beep. That's going to be the name of this episode. Beep, beep, beep. Back up the truck. Uh, hey, man, where can people see all of your awesome, awesome stuff, Will? Now it's 3 a.m. Uh, all the way over there. They can, they can see it at channelflip.com. They can follow me on the Twits at, uh, at Will Harris. At Will Harris. That's one L in Will, right? W-I-L-H-A-R-R-I-S. Justin, you got anything you want to pimp? Uh, yes, at Justin R. Young on Twitter. Follow it up. And then, of course, for all the latest uh, magic news, visit itricks.com. Awesome. Uh, and, of course, you can follow me at Shwood. You better hurry up because after this week, I will not accept any more Twitter followers. I will block anyone else who tries unless you do it. Uh, you got three days, basically. So when you hear this, you better do it today. And that's it for this episode of NSFW. I love you, Will. See you next Tuesday. Die in a fire, Will. Next Tuesday, next Tuesday, guys. You Brito. So wait, are you going to play at the dance? What? Oh, You're going to play the dance at the end. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, hold on. I'll fix that. Wait. Wait. Keep waiting. Continue to wait. Oh, we're waiting. All right, now we'll fix this. Here we go. It's